Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice. I have selfishly a very interesting episode lined up today, an area of business that I have always been curious about and never had good answers. So I'm hoping for you, the listener, we have all of the answers that you would ever want to know about merchant services. Yes, maybe a boring topic. That's okay. This is an area of your business that you need to have a hold of because, uh, you know, as our guests, I'm sure will explain, you spend way too much money if you're using Stripe and PayPal and all the big popular companies like that. So let's unpack this and welcome our guest, Tarina Taylor. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Brandon. So I really set you up there. We're gonna we're gonna throw some rocks at the big guys here. Stripe, PayPal. Let's let's kind of get the whole list out. Is it, are those the two big ones or are there more of these big companies that people are probably familiar with when we talk about merchant services? PayPal, Stripe for online is usually the top two. A Square, um, Toast and Clover is usually the ones for more like brick and mortar places. And we actually have a partnership with Clover. So we sell Clover as well. Oh, awesome. Okay. I was going to say something really mean about them, but I won't. <laughs> um, okay. So I've used, I've used all of those platforms in the past in multiple businesses, uh, you know, pros and cons, I'm sure. But I want to unpack, like, first of all, who, who should use your services versus like, when should we be looking at working with someone like you versus one of those big guys like a Stripe or a PayPal? Can you help me unpack that? Well, usually when we first get started in online business, we're going to go with those because they're the most popular and that's the ones where you can hurry up and get yourself starting to process payments. But once you start reaching a certain threshold, say 10K a month, you might come into an issue with PayPal or Stripe because with online businesses, the more you start to make, they will, what, what we have seen with businesses, shut down people's accounts or they'll put a hold on your funds for three to six months. I think six months is like, really pushing it but three months i mean just help holding your money for three months is it's not cool so what we do differently is we put you through an underwriting process ahead of time so none of those hiccups will come up so you, you usually get approved within 24 to 48 hours it's not anything difficult as long as you have a business bank account a government issue id and you have um if you do have a brick and mortar you have a business address then you good to go and you can get accepted within like i said 20 40, 48 hours yeah i i think you know this this sort of a product if you will or, or service really was brought to the front of my mind a few years ago i remember that exact thing happened to me so i had it was a brick and mortar business and we were collecting um at, at the time i got shut down i think it was over fifty thousand dollars in funds held um, and it was just, we had, we had an, it was a, mostly a seasonal business. We had influx of revenue mm -hmm. and it was uh, PayPal at the time. They held $50,000 of revenue for, it was almost three months. And I was like, I was panicked. I, yeah. mean, I had employees to pay. I had bills to cover my own bills to cover. And I was like, this is not cool at all. And that's when I started searching out, um, merchant services. So I think this is, this is why I was selfishly interested in this topic, because it seems like this thing like, oh, you know, maybe I'll get to it one day. But the stripes and the PayPal's are so convenient, right? Yeah. We don't we don't look at the downside of how much of our money are they taking? First exactly. and foremost, exactly. and then how, how quickly can they just say bye bye? We're shutting yep. you down and yep. they don't care. Um, so, yeah, this is this is an important conversation to have. So you said that kind of 10K in revenue mark um, is where you should probably start thinking about the switch. What does it look like in terms of finances? Like, I think everybody's familiar that the standard credit card rate is right around 3%. I mean, are, are the rates relatively similar or is it actually advantageous to um, go with a service like yours versus Stripe? Well, it's advantageous to go with a service like ours because what we do is we try to keep your fees as low as, as to interchange as possible. Interchange rates is the, what the credit card companies charge. So we try to keep those fees 
as close to interchange as possible because we we are a small business as well. So we try to help small businesses to save that money and put it back in their pocket to reinvest in the business. And then also what a lot of people don't know with those companies is that you're not actually getting a legitimate merchant account. You're just a sub merchant underneath of those big bigger merchants. They hold the actual merchant account. And you're just a sub merchant underneath of them. So you don't have the benefit of the protection of having that merchant ID. And then, like you said, with you, they they hold funds. We don't do that because we put you through the underwriting process of head, ahead of time. So you don't have to go through those situations where you have an influx in sales and then PayPal will stripe it saying, oh, you're high risk and we can't do business with you. Hmm, that's interesting. I didn't know that. So can, can you explain that a little bit more? Like, what does it mean to have your own uh, merchant ID? Your merchant ID is protection for you. you. You actually have a real merchant account with the actual merchant bank. So those companies, like I said, they're, they hold the actual merchant account with the merchant bank. You have actually have, so that's, you're cutting out a middleman. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? They're just the middleman. And that's why they get the tech on those little extra fees because they, they're the middleman. So we want to cut that middleman out and get you your own merchant account with an actual merchant bank. And then you don't have to go through them to process your payments. And then it goes directly to your bank account. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I didn't, I didn't even realize that. That's very interesting. So then as far as, um, you know, collecting payments and, and all of that stuff, the, the draw to one of the bigger companies is a, a Stripe or a PayPal, the convenience, they have right. the platform set up, they integrate with most websites, right? What is that? What is the difference there, if any? And what does the integration process look like to an existing website? Well, our integration process is dependent upon which service you actually need. Like if you do need um, just something for online payments, we have partnerships with NMI uh, Payment Gateway as well as Authorize.net. So that's just a process of you signing up to get the to get the service and then you pretty much integrated like you would with any other integration with your website. It's really simple. Most people, um, most websites actually do have an integration with either NMI or Authorize.net because they are widely known as well. So it's really not a problem. Um, as far as brick and mortar, we have partnerships with different companies. So it just depends on, depending on what type of equipment that you need. And um, that's pretty easy as well. Like I said, depending on what you choose. We have partnerships with like Deja Vu Terminals. Um, Clover is a big one that we really um, promote now. Um, we just created a partnership with Paya, which is uh, for ACH payments. And a lot of people don't know the benefits of ACH. I actually, we just started to learn more about that. So that's something that I'm new with as well. But that's another thing that we have. Um, so it's just the different partnerships we have is it just really is dependent upon what you need. So it's really customized to the actual business owner. I, well, I'd love to hear that. If you're if you're just getting into ACH and you're learning things that you didn't know, what, what are some of those things that maybe a small business owner wouldn't think about wouldn't or wouldn't even know to ask? Well, most business owners think that ACH payments, like if they go through their bank, they actually think they're getting it for free. But there's a lot of back end fees that they don't know about. So we would have to go in and do like a cost savings analysis to see where there are fees that you might not even know that you're paying. So that, is, like I said, it's dependent upon the business owner. Everything, you know, it's not a one size fits all type of thing. You know, most with the PayPal Stripe Squares, they more like one size fits all. Grab it up, hurry up, do business. So it's not like that with merchant services. It's really dependent upon what you need. It's really like bespoke and customized. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. I mean, I, I understand it's hard to, it's hard to answer that question because every business is unique. Yeah. Um, but I think that's kind of the benefit, right? Like w when you sign up for a square, a Stripe or a PayPal, you just get like, you get that rate. How, how much historically, have you been able to save companies when they go with merchant services over a company like that? Um, I think the biggest to date, um, maybe about, maybe about $10,000 a year. That's no small chunk of change. Yeah. With, with the fees that they tack on, we can save, we can cut those costs, reduce those fees. And then depending upon if you need any like different CRMs to connect with it, we offer CR, a different CRM. Um, we also connect with QuickBooks. So if you already have QuickBooks, we can integrate with that as well. So it's like I said, dependent upon the business. We, we just have a lot of different options. So it's like, it's hard to go through all the different options, but we do have a lot of partners that we can um, help you to find if you don't know about them or to integrate with the services that you already provide. Mm -hmm. 
Especially yeah. if you have like a re reoccurring type of situation where you have like a subscription based model, business model, um, those that, that will come in handy because with PayPal or Stripe, sometimes when those fees start to get higher and higher, you like you experience, they'll shut you down because they want to know what's going on, how you making so much money. They might think that it's a fraud involved. So that's the benefit of going through that underwriting process before you get the actual merchant account. Yeah, I found that if if you get shut down and then they call you and say what's going on, and you say you're you're dealing drugs, they don't like that answer. So <laughs> just a pro tip from experience. And did you that. know? Did you know that pay um, PayPal put in their um, clause like if you sell certain things and they didn't know about it, they'll they'll take ten thousand dollars just because you broke the user agreement. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. You don't you don't own your money until it's in your bank, and then I'm convinced you still don't own it. So right, right, right. <laughs> because the government is still watching. That's that is right. They're you're you're gonna watching. get this show canceled, okay, Tarina? <laughs> you're gonna get me off the internet. <laughs> you know, Uncle Sam wants his piece of change. Shh! Don't don't say it out loud. They they're listening. They're listening. Well, you you mentioned there's you know there's a bunch of different types of problems that you could you could solve for customers that's fantastic and every situation is unique i'm sure there are very common questions and i know that because i just put your website on the screen um and wherever you're watching listening is also in the show notes as well but tarina has a an ebook of 51 of the most common questions i'm curious if we could unpack some of these like what are the most common questions that small business owners ask when they first reach out to you oh, they want to know what the fees are of course that's like the number one answer um our fees are different, so they're not they're not the same as PayPal or Stripe, but they are very, very close to interchange. Interchange is what the credit card companies, Visa, MasterCard, uh, what they charge. That's interchange. So we do an interchange plus model, and that's plus with what our um, payment processor charges, which is usually like point, maybe 1.1%, 0.2% around that. And so that's the interchange plus model, and that's pretty much the business model that we try to stick to when we offer our services, because like I said, we want to keep those fees low because we want you to keep the money in your pocket. We're not trying to make a whole bunch of money off of you. We just want you to have a better service. Mm -hmm. So can we break that down a minute? I'm, I'm familiar with these terms because I've, I've been through this process, but but the first time I went through it, I was like, what what is it interchange, first of all? Um, so when you're saying interchange, it's basically if I were to pay you $100, if I use a Visa card or a MasterCard, regardless of like if it's tied to uh, Chase or United or Mar whatever, Visa is taking ballpark 1.4% per transaction. So when we round up to 2.9, the difference is what's going to Stripe or PayPal. So just to be clear, can, can you explain that better than me first and foremost? And am I, am I right? Or am I you're, off? You're, you're absolutely correct. That's pretty much what's happening. And you know, a lot of businesses will avoid American Express because you know, American Express fees are higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of businesses will not accept American Express or sometimes they'll do um, um, a cash discount where they'll put the the charges of the actual credit card, the interchange, they'll charge it to the client as opposed to them paying the fees themselves. Me and my mom just actually went to a restaurant the other day. They were using Clover um, and they all the whole four percent. If you use your credit card, four percent, you had to pay an extra four percent because they weren't covering any of the credit card fees wow that's uh i've never heard that for a restaurant that's interesting mm -hmm. um, a lot of a lot of businesses are doing it now um we call it a cash discount so mm -hmm. if you pay in cash of course you're going to get a discount because you're not paying those credit card fees yeah and that, i think it's you know some people can't do it it's better for the business it's better for you as the customer so when you can awesome but it's a credit card world it's a plastic world so we it have is. to we have to adapt where we can what are on the flip side of the most common questions though what are some of the questions that you maybe wish more business owners would ask you or or know ahead of time before starting this process um just knowing everything you need to go through the underwriting process smoother because like i said we're trying to get you accepted approved as quick as possible so just having that paperwork that you need making sure you have a business bank account because i know a lot of businesses have started without having a business bank account and once they reach a certain amount of money, they switch. But just keeping those fees separate from your business and your personal finances is something that you should have set up immediately once you start your business. That's just something to me that 
you should have. Um, having proper um, IDs. And then if you can um, get a copy of your actual merchant um, your merchant account that you are, what are you doing with Stripe and Square? They don't actually show like your a whole merchant statement, but then you can get, you know, your past like six months of, you know, how much you, you've paid, how much you charge, how much they charge you in credit card fees. So that's just something that we would like to see. So we can do a cost savings analysis to see where we can save you money. Mm. Yeah. I was going to say, when you, when you start working with people, do you ever show them side by side? Like, okay, here you're, you're spending an extra, whatever, $500 a month on, on your credit cards. Yeah. That's part of the initial consultation with That's what we try to just do to see the value that we provide as far as our, our, our services, as opposed to the other companies. Mm -hmm. And then as you're going through this process, let's say someone does want to switch, it makes financial sense. It's everything's going to integrate. Are there any, any common roadblocks or, um, one second. Know, maybe, what's that? I'm sorry. That was my daughter. Um, <laughs> no problem. Um, I'm just curious. So are there any common roadblocks or hurdles, if you will, in the process after you, after the underwriting, um, as far as, you know, website integrations, what are the things that we should be planning ahead before we go through this, just so our customers don't experience any sort of delays in, in service? Oh, yeah, definitely. With the website integrations, we just we have to make sure, verify that we are able to integrate with your website. Um, most websites we can, there's no issues, but just, you know, have that making sure we want to be sure that we'll be able to seamlessly integrate with whatever you have going on. So we're not stopping any services. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it's always good to plan ahead. And I'm sure I'm sure in the ebook that I put on the screen and again is in the show notes, you kind of answer all these questions. Yeah, to go through. OK, yeah. that's good stuff. Yeah. I mean, for me, this the conversation is is important because when I when my eyes were open to what rights I have and don't have as a business owner of my my own money, I was terrified and I immediately switched off of at that time off of PayPal, like I said, but still they held my money for three months. So it's this is a terrifying situation. Hopefully most people don't ever get to that point. Right. But I think this conversation is is worth visiting. Um, should should somebody be in a position where they maybe don't want to lose all of their income for three months? So um, that's what we want to avoid. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. So if if someone is uh, interested in reaching out and getting this process started, I know you gave us the link for the ebook, but where's the best place to go to get this conversation started with you? TarinaTaylor.com. Any you come straight to my website, you can book a, a consultation immediately. Consultations are free. I do not charge because I just want you to see the value in saving money. And once you switch over, um, I don't charge anything for you to switch over either. We just want to want you to you know work with us because we feel that we are the best. <laughs> That's it. Work with the best. Say mm -hmm. say no more, right? Well, Tarina, right. thank you so much for coming here and, and unpacking some of this with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Brandon. I'm so happy that I got the chance to talk with you. And um, I'm on all social medias as well. So if you want to come follow me on Facebook, Instagram, I'm there. I'm not on TikTok anymore. They shut me down. So <laughs> I let them go. <laughs> At least they didn't hold your money, right? Right, like, right. Positives. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. So we'll include all of those links and all the social media down in the show notes below. Wherever you're watching or listening, make sure you hit subscribe. So we can keep bringing you these informational episodes, bite-sized business advice for you at lunch, and hopefully opening your eyes to different ways to grow your business, save you money, make more money, whatever it is. We're here to help every single weekday for 15 to 20 minutes. We'll see you on the next episode.